Hello everybody, my name is Provis. Let's try Monster Train, a deck building roguelite that has been taking the deck building world by storm for the last few months, and justifiably so. This might just be the best deck building game we have seen since Slay the Spire, and you guys know I love that game, so it's saying a lot. I only picked up Monster Train a couple of days ago, so I am late to the party here, but already I'm finding it's remarkably fun, and I wanted to show it off for the channel today. Now, the story of this game is that we are playing as the Denizens of Hell. A military branch from heaven has literally frozen hell over. We carry the Pyre, the last spark of hell's fire. And our goal is to ride the monster train to the heart of hell, cast it into the heart, and reignite our home. But of course, the forces of heaven are going to try to stop us at any cost. Let's go ahead and start up a new run, and I will show you how this game is going to work. Now, there are five different clans that we can play, or races. And each one of them has unique cards and play style in order to make them a bit more enjoyable and give you a lot of replayability. One is the Hellhorned, aggressive demons that like to slay enemies and build up their rage to get more powerful, very offensively focused. Conversely, we have the Awoken, which are very defensively focused. They apply spikes in order to damage anyone who attacks them and use lots of regenerative abilities in order to keep themselves nice and healthy and powerful. The Stygian Guard use uh, spell weakness and damage over time to wreak havoc upon their foes using magic. The Umbra consume things around them and gorge themselves in order to become more and more powerful. And actually the little morsels that they eat kind of remind me of the soot sprites you would find in Hayao Miyazaki films like Spirited Away or My Neighbor Totoro. Not relevant to the game, just kind of a funny little tidbit there. And I only recently just unlocked the Melting Remnant, who have pretty powerful units that will burn out over time. If you can't keep their flame lit, then those units will be removed from the battle. Or perhaps you find a way to reform the wax into something a bit more powerful. Pretty fun, but I haven't played with them yet because I've only had this game for a couple of days. We're going to go ahead and play with the Stygian as our primary clan, and let's say the Awoken as our allied clan. The primary clan determines what champion you are going to get, and that's very important for your playstyle. But I think these two synergize pretty well to each other. Uh, we can get a lot of buffs for our spells, and using regenerative spells works very well, I think. So we'll do that. Now, there is something called the Covenant rank in the game, which is very similar to the Ascension mode you found in something like Slay the Spire. That is, as you beat different ranks of the Covenant, you keep upgrading to the next level and making the game harder and harder and harder. By the time you get to Covenant rank 25, the game gets unbelievably difficult. In my case, I'm only Covenant rank 2 because I've just started, but we'll go ahead and try to work our way up to Covenant 3 today. Now, actually, the developers just recently added in something new to the game called Mutators, which is just little quirks that can uh, customize your run. For example, um, Burn Bright, you get extra energy per turn, or uh, let's say uh, Levity, all enemy units are faster and gain haste, those kind of things, just to give you a little bit more randomization if you want. But I would say this game already has a tremendous amount of replayability, so I'm not going to worry about this right now. Let's go ahead and depart. And we will get started. Now, the final boss is always called Seraph. He is a super angel, and he's slightly different every time you play. Uh, lots of different buffs to kind of change your final boss experience. In this case, he cleanses all um, buffs and debuffs in order to make the battle tilt more in his direction. So a buff-heavy deck probably will not work well for me, but I think we'll be okay with the Stygian in this particular case. We also start off with some uh, starting cards that are randomized every time. In my case, I have the Offering Token, Draw 1, Discard 1. Works well if you have a, uh, a discard enabling deck. Sting, which does damage for free and also draws an extra card next turn. And Glacial Seal, Encant. Every time we play a spell on the floor where this is placed, then we are going to uh, apply Frostbite to enemy units. Alright, that's what we get. We'll work with it for now. Now, every phase of Monster Train involves exploring the map with your train and then moving on to a battle phase. So to start, we're going to go ahead and grab an artifact, which are kind of like the trinkets you would find. Again, I'm going to compare it to Slay the Spire, but that's kind of how it works. The Sap Tap. The first time a friendly unit is healed, we draw a card. Okay, kind of works well with the Awoken. Or the Root Split Mask. Apply rooted to enemy units when they enter the floor beneath the pyre. Buy some time, but probably not that helpful. I'm going to go for the Sap Tap. And maybe the extra card draw is going to make a difference. Now, I did say that because we're playing as a Stygian, we get the Stygian Champion. And at the Dark Forge, we can upgrade our Champion. So let's do that now. With our Champion, Tethys mm -hmm. Titan's Bane, we can go for Chill Wind, which applies Frostbite to attacked units, or a Sweep, which applies Spell Weakness to all units. Sweep means we attack everything on a floor, so we can do damage to a lot of units. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up to start. Also, I like the extra health because uh, my champion's very squishy at the beginning of the game. It can get killed pretty quickly if you're not lucky. So I want to be careful about that. 
So we're going to move on to the battle phase. We can see who our enemies are going to be. Also, we can see we have the option to make it more difficult for extra reward. In this case, enemy units will enter with extra armor. But if we do this, we would get an extra unit when we are finished with this fight. I'm going to go ahead and take that risk and let's see what we can do. Extra units, of course, very helpful. Now, welcome to the train. This is where all the battles are going to take place. There are four floors to the train. The first three floors are where your enemies and your units are going to be fighting each other. The enemies usually will spawn on the bottom floor and then every phase work their way up until they can get to the pyre room at the top. If they can get here, they will attempt to attack your pyre. If they destroy it, you lose the game. So you have to protect it at all costs. Now, if I want to place, let's say, my um, hero down here at the bottom, we can do so. And we will survive the first phase, so I think this is probably fine to do. I will also place down the Glacial Seal right here. Now, notice these little pips being taken up right here. Every floor has capacity, which determines how many monsters you can play on a single floor. In this case, five capacity. Uh, these units each are going to take up one capacity, hence why we can place down both of them we have three pips left. Some units take up more than one pip, so you have to be careful how many units you place on each floor and make sure you're working together to get the most advantage possible. Now because I have placed down the Glacial Seal, we're going to be applying uh, Frostbite to enemy units, so I want, now want to be placing some spells if possible. I'm going to play a Sting so we can do damage, apply the Frostbite, and also try to get a card next time. And then I'm going to apply, let's say... Um, Let's go ahead and play the Frozen Lance to do some more damage, then play the Offering Token. We'll draw a card, then immediately discard it, but you can see we've applied a lot of Frostbite. This guy is going to die moving on into the next turn. Now, the way that this is going to work is every, uh, every end of the phase, they are going to attack me, then we are going to attack them, and then anyone who survives is going to move up to the next floor. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to normal speed so you can see how this is going to work. So they're going to attack me, pew, then I'm going to attack them and apply Spell Weakness. They get hurt. This guy now moves on. Pretty helpful to understand how this is going to work. Now, I want to speed things up a little bit because I prefer to play on super ultra speed. It makes the game way more playable, in my opinion. Now, right now, my hero is on the verge of death, and I don't like that at all. So we're going to play down a train steward here to absorb some of the hits. We're also going to play down, let's say, a restore right here so we can apply some more frostbite, but also heal up my hero so they're better able to survive in the future. I could play down another train steward here, which is nice. Um, just to kind of do some more damage. But this guy doesn't do any damage to me in the first place. Uh, if he gets all the way to the pyre, he's just going to die. It's unfortunate that I can't kill the collector, because this guy's going to run away next turn. But if we could kill them, we get some extra gold, which is good for later. But we'll have to live with it for now. We're going to go ahead and play the offering token to draw. Let's discard the dead weight, because that doesn't matter. But apply some more frostbite. I'm going to apply... Um Probably a uh, another restore? Nah, let's go ahead and play a frozen lance here. Actually... No, let's go ahead and play down a Train Steward just so I have another unit over here ready to intercept somebody, but that should be fine. Okay, that should be alright. Let's go ahead and do that. The Frostbite applied will likely get this guy killed next turn regardless. Then we're going to apply a couple of Stings here. Uh, the damage takes advantage of the Spell Weakness, so we did a little extra damage there. Let's play the Offering Token. See what we draw. Another Offering Token. I will just... Eh, I think I'll keep it. Let's, um, let's discard the Restore. And then I'm going to apply... Actually, there was no reason to do that. No, never mind. I was thinking I want to take advantage of the encamp, but no enemies appeared on the bottom floor. Let's play another train steward, just so we can do a bit more damage, and then this doesn't matter, so we'll just go ahead and discard and move on to this. All right. Didn't have to play it that way, but I did. Okay, here comes the final boss. Now, when the final boss enters into the room, uh, it's kind of a uh, kill or be killed scenario. They don't move up the next floor until everyone is already dead, all right? So we got to be careful about that. I could play down a restore and buy myself a little bit more time here, but I'm not sure that's necessarily what I want to do. Could be, though. The more time you build, the more chances my uh, hero has to play some damage to the boss. So let's um, restore. Restore, so we survive an extra phase. And then probably could do one more to buy my hero a bit more time. Alternatively, I think a Frozen Lance results in more damage. So let's do that instead. And of course the extra encant is applying more Frostbite, which is helpful. That's all I can do for now. These guys are gonna here. Now this unit got moved into the pyre, so they were able to do some damage, and I took some health damage, but not too bad right now. I'm going to apply a sting and another sting, and we are going to discard this weight of contrition, which applies pyre damage if we keep it. And then we'll do another offering token to draw something else. Let's get rid of the dead weight, and then I'll use my energy to fight here. Now, unfortunately, we have not done a lot of damage to the boss, and we don't have many units left in the deck, so it's very likely he's going to get to the pyre and do a lot of damage. But that's okay, not a big deal right now. 
I'm going to do as much damage to him as possible via the stings, via the frozen lances. We don't have anything to restore, so let's go ahead and reduce the amount of damage my Pyre takes. So when they get to the final floor, the Pyre fights back. In this case, you can see the Pyre does 20 damage. So he's going to survive for three rounds, which means we're going to take 12 damage on the Pyre. Not great, but not bad at the beginning of the game. And I'd say getting the extra 50 gold right now is definitely worth it. That's why I wanted to take the harder fight. Sorry, not 50 gold. We get an extra unit draft. Even better. So I think it was well worth the amount of damage we took. Not a big deal. Now we can choose a card. Flash Freeze will give me a chance to apply some damage in the back line, which I kind of like. Also some Frostbite. We already have two offering tokens. I don't need to apply more spell weakness. So we're going to go for this. And then for the Awoken, another Sting is okay. Um, consume means that you play it once and then it's removed from your deck for the rest of the battle. So this doesn't thicken my deck too much, but the extra regen could be nice. Alternatively, a Sharpen, which gives spikes and extra damage to a unit. But what would I play that on? At the moment, nothing. So I think we might want to go for the... We don't have a hard... We might get something that benefits from regen later. I think I'm going to take the Wildwood Sap, but I'm kind of iffy on that one. Okay, now we have an, uh, three different units we could choose from. The Animus of Will has Multi-Strike, which means they attack multiple times in one round. Pretty helpful. I like this one a lot. We have Nameless Siren for Encant. Every time we play a spell again on their floor, they get stronger. In this case, Rage, which gives them extra strength. Or the Offering Monument, which uh, draws extra cards. Between all these, I think I'm going to take the Animus of Will. Very weak at the beginning, but the multi-strike could end up being very helpful. What I really need is a tank, somebody who can get a lot of the hits in the beginning of the game and protect my backline unit so they can do a lot of damage. So I think I kind of have to go down this route with the train. We'll try to get an extra Stygian unit. And in this case, the Guard of the Unnamed is perfect and can't gain armor. I love that, we'll pick it up. Alternatively, we could have gone down this route, gotten some gold and upgrades for our spells. But I wanted to get a unit and we'll get upgrades for our units. Now, units have slots on them for upgrades. Actually, if you click on here, you can see the two slots currently available to them. So we can make our units more powerful. I'm actually going to go ahead and buy an extra incant for armor so we can kind of double up on this effect and make him super duper tanky. So that's what I want to do there. You can also apply some spikes, but I don't think I really need that. Let's go ahead and spend some gold to re-roll. Okay, this is all right. Um, I want to get some extra health on this unit just so he's more likely to survive. So we'll do this. Just so I have a better tank, but in the future I want to apply a lot of extra damage to my multi-strike unit so we can get a little bit more effect here, but that's fine. So upgrading your units is a very, very important aspect of the game. Uh, having strong units can definitely carry you, having strong spells can make a big difference, getting as much gold as possible makes a big difference. Uh, in this case we can have enemies spawn on every floor in order to gain some extra gold. I will, though it most likely will result in my pyre taking a lot of damage, but I'm okay with it because I need the extra gold right now and we'll have a chance to try and get some more health later. All right, so enemies are going to spawn everywhere. Kind of sucks, but that's all right. Um, what I want to do now, I could probably... I could probably afford... Well, I'm only going to have one really strong floor, to be honest, but... Um, let's play down the Guard of the Unnamed here. And then we'll play down, let's say, the Animus of Will and my hero both do this, we've filled up our floor, but now we can kill everything because we have a sweep unit plus we have multi-strike. Unnecessary to have both here, but they're too uh, they're too squishy to stick out on their own. Then I'm going to go ahead and play a Frozen Lance to get an encant on my uh, tank here so he takes less health damage, and the offering token, even though I immediately discard just to get some extra armor. Alright, good enough. The sweep should clear most of this out. We're not going to take too much damage on the pyre. I think that's going to end up being just fine. Let's play a Restore, so we heal up and we get an Incant Trigger, also a Sting, also an Offering Token to get rid of, let's say, a Train Steward for now. I will apply, I will apply another Train Steward up top and then we will do a Frozen Lance just to weaken you and make you easier to kill. Alright, fine with me. Seems pretty decent. Okay, we do now have the Glacial Seal. Would like to play that. Um. I guess we can play down a Train Steward and the Glacial Cereal here, just so we can have more uh, Frostbite applied at the bottom. Then we'll play another Sting, and that's all we can do at the moment, but my tank is sticking together pretty darn well right now, so I think we're doing alright. Doing A-OK. -okay. Here comes the final wave already, no surprises there. Uh, I'm going to apply a Flash Freeze on the healing unit, just so the he uh, hero doesn't heal up. Then we are going to play a Offering Token to get some more Encant Triggers. Let's get rid of the dead weight. Um, 
I kind of think I want to play the Wildwood Sap for the extra regeneration and armor, and then let's just go for some extra raw damage to apply more Frostbite to the uh, enemy, enemy champion. Got a little bit more damage on the Pyre, but not a big deal. He moves up. Let's sting him. This is where we have lots of spells, and this works so well with what I've already got, because I'm getting the Encant trigger, so this guy lives longer, plus the Restores, etc., etc. We can do a Frozen Lance, we can do an Offering Token, we can discard the Train Steward, I can play another Sting, etc., etc. Now, he's already dying, but this is how we're trying to synergize our deck. Lots of spells on Encant units is pretty darn good. But he is going to die, and we successfully got through our second fight. Not too bad, and we didn't take too much damage on the Pyre, but I'm going to get a lot of extra gold. So I think that's well worth it. Now let's see what we got for our card draw. Titan's Gratitude, deal 30 damage and then discard a card at random. Helical Crystals do 25 damage to the front unit twice, or another Flash Freeze. I think I'm going to go for Helical Crystals because this takes very good advantage of the spell weakness that our hero is applying to units. And then out of these, Glimmer's not bad. Restore health and deal damage to all enemy units can be pretty good for uh, just clearing out some of the trash enemy units. But then we have Sweep for that anyway, so maybe Restoration Detonation would be better. I'm going to go for that, uh, where we heal our frontline unit and we do a lot of damage to the enemies as a result. So I think that's fine. We could go for a uh, an artifact, and I like that. Also health, but I think we still need more units, especially more heavy hitters or encanters. Actually, this is a great example of something right here. Uh, Siren of the Sea, more encant. Works very well for my floor, so we'll do that. Merchant of Magic will allow me to um, buy some upgrades to my spells, but before that, let's go to the Concealed Caverns. Just see if we get any sort of a special buff or, uh, I don't know, an artifact or a card. I don't know, whatever it's going to be. In this case, it's our Blacksmith Lady who wants to give me something. Could be the Automated Rail Spike, which can do damage. Okay. Or the Rail Driver. Eh. I mean, if you upgrade it, it's not, it's not bad, but it's not great. I think I'll just take the Rail Spike. Maybe we use it. Um, an X card takes however much energy you have and applies it that many times. So, three energy means 30 damage on a unit. Okay. Eh, it's just sort of all right. Not a big deal. So, let's go to the Merchant of Magic and see if we can upgrade some spells. Holdover is nice. Um, whenever it has been played, it gets put onto the top of your draw. So basically, you guarantee you're going to have this card almost every time. Um, if I were to do that, what would I want to put it on, though? We could put it on the Offering Token, so I guarantee that I have it every single turn, so I keep shuffling through my deck. And then in the future, if we get an Offering card, it guarantees that I have a way to trigger it every time. That's not bad. I'm going to apply it here. I think it's a controversial pick, but that's what I'm going to go for. We could also apply some more magic power. Uh, let's say a little bit of extra damage for a back line for the flash freeze. Could be fine. And then also we can reduce the cost of something. I'm going to reduce the cost of helical crystals, so we're more likely to get to play it. We could reroll, but then we won't have enough gold for it, so let's just go ahead and move on to the next turn. And we get to fight another boss, Daedalus. This guy's going to place down mines. They're annoying, but oh well, what can you do? Okay, here we go. Um, mine up over here. It explodes and kills things, basically. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and place down the Guard of the Unnamed and also our Sweet Hero, so we can make sure we clear these guys out. Then I'm going to do a Sting and a Frozen Lance, and let's apply a Train Steward up over here. Hopefully we can play down our Multi-Strike unit in the future. But I'm going to go for as much Encanting on the bottom floor as possible. And I also want to place my Siren down here, so we have two units taking advantage of lots and lots of spells. All right, that worked out pretty well, I think. Uh, Siren of the Sea absolutely goes down here. Could place down the Glacial Seal. Not sure that I necessarily want to do that right now, though. Um, maybe I do, though. If I place down a Frozen Lance, we can get some more Encants and do a lot of damage. Glacial Seal is okay. I think I'll hold off on that because it's going to cost me too much. Let's go ahead and play the Frozen Lance. And maybe another Train Steward up over here. That should be fine. Okay, moving on. Pretty good. So far, my units are nice and healthy and getting stronger as time goes on. Now, this is where I probably shouldn't have played the Train Steward because I could have placed down the Animus of Will down here, but for now, I think that's going to have to be fine. Let's just go ahead and do another Sting and maybe a Restoration and a Train Steward and the Animus of Will on the top floor will have to be fine. That way, we guarantee this person is going to die. Okay? It's okay. It's not a big deal. My bottom floor right now is a heavy hitter. I think we're going to be fine as is. I'm not too worried about these guys down here. Now, we could play the Helical Crystals to obliterate this guy, and I think that's probably a good play. Let's also do the Offering Token to draw. We're going to get rid of the dead weight. Um, let's see. I could also use the Helical Crystals to try and kill these guys a little faster, but I'm not too worried how much damage they do to the Pyre. It's pretty inconsequential. So let's do the Helical Crystals, kill that guy. 
Then we are going to do a Wildwood Sap on you, I think. And then maybe um, we could apply some Frostbite to somebody. If I put it on you... If I put it on you, you're not going to get to the Pyre. Let's just go ahead and do that. That should be fine. All right. So we're not going to take any Pyre damage if I have anything to say about that. There's our Holdover. As long as we play it every turn, it keeps coming back. So let's see. I want to do a Sting, and I want to do a Sting, and I want to do a Restore, and perhaps another Restore. But let's do this first. Then the Offering Token. We got another Train Steward. Let's discard a Frozen Lance. Do I want to play down another Train Steward? I guess we could. Let's do that. So they, they survive. All right. The Animus of Will is currently exposed. Oh, we did take some damage. Oh, well. It's probably all right. Um, the Glacial Seal is now a thing. I'm going to go ahead and place you down here, just in case we need to apply some Frostbite to the enemy boss. But right now, I think we're all right. Uh, let's see. You don't have any Spell Weakness. You do have Spell Weakness. So we could play the Helical Crystals on you, and that should do a load of damage. In fact, a load of damage. <laughs> so he's, he's now going to die. Perfect. We could do another Offering Token and stuff, but that doesn't matter too much. All right. Boss down. Only took two damage on the Pyre. Not a big deal. Easy enough. I'm going to move me a little bit more to the side here, by the way. Just so we're kind of out of the way. Okay. Cool. So, now we get 75 more coins. Uh, for our card... I don't have any Spikes units. Pyre bound. 90 damage to the enemy front unit. Can only be played in the Pyre room and the floor below it. It's okay for an emergency. Hoarfrost, I don't think I'm going to use. We could take this. I don't know if I'm ever going to need it, but maybe? It's good as an emergency card, I suppose. Sometimes it'll be helpful. Pick it up. Then we can get another tank unit with the Titan Sentry. That seems tempting to me. Apply Frostbite to enemy units. Yeah, I'll play this on the floor, probably with the Animus, where I'm not going to be playing spells, because I'm not going to take advantage of Encant, but it's still a pretty good tank, so I think that works for me. Now we get to choose an enhancement. I can either get an extra energy per turn, drop per turn, or capacity. I'm a big fan of extra capacity, generally speaking, because that just means more monsters per floor, though there are certainly situations where the extra energy can work very, very well. Now, I can go down this way, I can duplicate a card, get another Awoken unit, and some gold, or I can get some health, remove two cards, and upgrades. Um, I really would like to get another Awoken unit, but I think I'm going to have to go for the upgrades instead. Because right now my units are a little on the weak side, also removing some cards would make sense. So I'm going to remove probably a couple of Train Stewards, right now they're kind of trash. But I'll also remove, let's say, one of these Frozen Lances. Just thin out the deck so I get the good cards a little bit more often. Now for upgrades, quick on our multi-strike unit is pretty good. I want to get a damage upgrade if possible, though. And then maybe a Battlestone or an Encant. Um, Battlestone to make, let's say... I can make my tank stronger and actually do some damage, or I can make my Siren better. I could make this do a lot more damage, but I think I'm holding out for a better option later. Eh, at the same time, this isn't bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Adding on the extra health means that if my enemy has sweep, I'm more likely to survive. But I think I'm going to instead just increase the health of my Titan Sentry, and we're going to hold out hope for something a little bit better later. Alright, let's try for that. And we have to upgrade our champion again. Uh, more spell weakness is nice. Alternatively, I can start applying Frostbite on top of my sweep, which goes very well, I think. I like that better than more spell weakness. Now we're just going to apply tons and tons of Frostbite to every unit that comes onto that floor. Synergizes quite well, I think. Alright. Non-boss units that have not been killed gain all their health back for a random artifact. I'm willing to take that risk. I think we can ramp up enough to make this work. We'll try for it. The Frostbite still applies anyway, so we're buying ourselves a chance to kill him. Haste here, I don't like. So let's go ahead and do the Guard of the Unnamed. We're going to apply a Sweep unit. So Haste, the way that this works is they skip a floor and move on. But we're killing this guy with Sweep, so we'll be fine here. Glacial Seal, I could place down here, and I can still do my Encant as well. So we'll do this. And in the future, I'll be able to do lots and lots of Encanting, I think. Um, I want to place down my Titan Sentry here. The... Uh, Siren of the Sea here, and I said I want to place down my Animus. We'll do that. Not enough to kill you, but even if you get to the Pyre, you do zero damage, so who cares? Alright. We did not manage to get the gold, unfortunately, but we didn't have the cards for that. Um, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do a Restoration Detonation, which heals and also does a lot of damage to this enemy unit here. Let's go ahead and uh, start using the Offering Token to play the Dead Weights. We can do another one. Uh, I am going to instead play the Helical Crystals to try and get you killed. Yes, let's play Helical Crystals here. 
because we're not going to be able to kill him and he'll heal up to the next floor anyway. Let's do a sting. Let's do an offering token. Let's get rid of the frozen lance and just apply a flash freeze on... I guess we can just kill you for the heck of it, but it doesn't matter too much. Actually, I should have played it down here just to get the extra encant trigger. What am I talking about? That doesn't make any sense. The good thing about the offering token being holdover is I guarantee I can do an encant every single floor. Or every every time. So this is fantastic. Let's do a stink. And let's do the offering token. Let's get rid of the pyre bound. It's not relevant right now. Let's do a restore. We can do another bunch of restores. So we are plenty healed up. Um, not killing you, unfortunately. I'm going to play down a train steward here just so we can get a little bit more damage on this floor. Hopefully killing somebody. I guess I could have used the spike, the rail spike, but I didn't need to. I think it's alright. Uh, nothing happening down here, so we could just play a bunch of spells to try and get lots of encant triggers. Let's first do the Helical Crystals to kill you. And then we're going to play the Offering Token, and we're going to get rid of the... Uh, the, uh, Flash Freeze, I guess. That's fine. We could do a Restoration. Don't need to. Let's do... Let's do a train steward up top. We can apply a quick frozen lance, and we can do an offering token to get rid of something, blah, blah, blah. Just more encant triggers. All right. Strong, strong bottom floor. The boss is already dead. Absolutely no problem whatsoever. Cool. Let's go ahead and move on then. So that's a situation where we took on a harder, uh, uh, harder round, but we're going to take no penalty for it, and we just get stronger. So always do that when you can. Channel heart. Our stings are stronger. We have stings. So that's actually fantastic for me. Very happy with that. Cuddle Hex. Supply Frozen so we can keep cards. Nah. Urchin Spine's spell weakness could be helpful. Ice Storm, if upgraded, could be pretty strong. It can be very strong, actually. Do I prefer spell weakness or do I prefer upgrading this to do a lot of damage? I think I'll take the raw damage of Ice Storm. I think that's fine. Uh, I think the extra Sting spells in conjunction with our Trinket makes a lot of sense. So we're going to pick that up. Definitely. Okay. And then where do we want to go? Remove cards and upgrade units or start upgrading spells. I still want upgrades for units, but right now I think we're okay on that front. Removing cards is nice too, but let's go down this way. Let's grab some trinkets. Regen, extra health. Very good. When you play a spell, spells in that hand uh, that cost less are reduced. Only good if we have expensive spells, which I don't have anything that costs more than one. So we're going to go for the better regeneration for survivability. Let's go to the uh, sealed cavern and see if I get anything really fun. We can lose a lot of health to gain money, and I'm actually okay with that because I feel confidence right now in my health. Not worried about it. Extra coins just means lots and lots of upgrades for the future. Now we want to go for our Merchant of Magic and upgrade things. Double stack. Apply lots of frostbite. It's not bad. Alternatively, apply loads of regen, which we just made stronger. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, 20 magic power plus consume. Now, if we apply this to Ice Storm, it's going to disappear. We can only use it once, but it will do 105 damage on that floor split between units. That's pretty good. Um, is that worth it to me right now? Yeah, how often do I think I'm going to end up using this? Let's do that. Then I'm going to reduce the cost of a spell again. Uh, we can make Flash Freeze free. Restoration, detonation, free. Um, heal crystals, free. I think this is worth making. Eh, I kind of wouldn't make. I wouldn't mind making this stronger too. We could just have a free restore every single turn, or every time it comes around. I don't know. Um, Let's make the restoration free, and I'm going to try to make this stronger later, but this way I have no excuse not to be applying extra regeneration on an encamp floor whenever I have the chance. I don't know, I think that one's a toss-up. There's a lot of different ways we could do it, but I think it's fine. Make the non-boss enemy's unit stronger. Scary, but I think I'm going to do it. I think we can survive as long as we apply plenty of armor on my, uh, my encamp units. Okay. Uh, didn't start with the tank, so that's always scary. These guys can do a lot of damage. They can kill my units, so I'm actually going to play you guys up over here instead. And uh, we're not going to fight them this turn, but we'll fight them next turn. Hopefully I get my tank. I did not. Uh, well, that's a problem. We can do the preserved thorns, but what I need to do is start drawing and pray that I get my tank. Uh, I don't need restoration detonation. Wow, okay. Um, a train steward is not exactly what I had in mind. Let's place, get rid of the sting for now. I think we're still okay in that we can get rid of a lot of these things, but let's play down this train steward just to die and take the initial hits. I will do a sting on you. 
an Animus of Will up top to kill you. And we can do the Helical Crystals and then a Sting. And that way you're dead and the Train Steward's dead to make way for the Shark next time around. I need some sort of a tank. There they are. Okay. Let's play you down here. So you'll survive. Then we'll play the Titan Sentry up top. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play down another Sting. And let's do the Offering Token, see what we draw. Another Sting. I'm going to get rid of the Automatic Rail Spike. Sting you. And we can apply a regen, and that way we have plenty of armor so we don't take too much damage, and these guys are all going to die through the Frostbite and the Sweet. Perfect. All right. Now we're back in control of the situation. So the Offering Token, make sure we do it on the Encant floor. Um, we could play down another Train Steward. I guess I will go ahead and do so. These guys are mostly all going to die. Let's do a regen. And I could do the Restoration Detonation, and I will try and get this guy killed faster so he can do more damage. It's still not enough. Another Restore, you're going to barely survive, but I think you'll be okay. Let's apply some Frostbite to you, just to try and make it easier to kill you when you build up the next floor. Alright. Seems pretty solid. The problem is this guy has Harvest, so every time uh, an, a, a unit dies, including his allies, he gains armor, which is making it very difficult to kill him. Uh, let's see, Offering Token. Get rid of the dead weight. don't need this. Let's go for the Regen plus 10. Still not enough to save you? Uh-oh. So I need to kill something. I think this is where I need to use the Automatic Rail Spike. Let's go for the Offering Token. Okay, we got Ice Storm. We can do that instead. That's probably better. So let's go ahead and do it here. Okay, so now you're surviving, thankfully. Uh, Frozen Lance gets you killed. Okay. Solid, solid. Okay, so our enemy boss has Stealth. He's going to be able to fight me for several rounds without taking any um, without taking any damage in return. So let's just sting the ever-loving crud out of him for 75, casually. Let's do oh, shouldn't have done on that floor. That was a mistake. Should always do the offerings on the top floor. We'll do another regeneration here, plus a sting, plus a sting. Holy crap, that's just broken. All right, so he's going to get... No, he did not get through the fire. All right. So he's got seven turns of stealth. He's going to apply a lot of damage, but it's not enough to overcome me. He is still very much dead. We'll do some stings anyway, just for funsies. We'll apply an offering token, and I'll do the dead weight, and we'll do the helical crystals, and we'll do the flash freeze, and we'll restore, and we'll do another sting, and blah, blah, blah. All right. So he attacks several times, doesn't hit in return, not enough, he dead. Not bad. Easy enough. Okay, plenty of money coming in. New cards. An offering card. That works very well with the guaranteed discord. I can apply a uh, sap. So the way offering works is if I discard this card, it applies its effect without costing me energy. In this case, it reduces their damage. So Guardian's Amulet, 100% worth picking up. Another sting. Yep, that is broken. So many stings is great, because they cost nothing, and then just next turn, I'm going to get lots and lots of draw, so it doesn't even hurt me. I think it's super good. Uh, let's see. I can duplicate a card, but if I wanted to do that, what would I duplicate? Another Guardian's Amulet, maybe. Another Holdover. Another Ice Storm. More stings? Eh. I think instead of going down this route, let's go over here. We'll pick up the money, we'll get rid of some cards. Uh, let's get rid of the less useful Train Steward, and perhaps... These Frozen Lances aren't too useful to me, but I'll, I'll hold on to them for now. I'm just going to get rid of two Train Stewards. They just take up capacity for not a lot of benefit right now. Alright, Merchants of Magic. Uh, we can get another upgrade here. I will apply it to a Restore, so I can restore 22 health. I will make something cheaper. What would I want to make cheaper? Um, we can make the Helical Crystals free. I'll do that. Then we're going to re-roll. Another Consume. I can remove Consume and make something cost more. Is that worth it to me right now, though? I can make Thorns keep coming back, but I think that might be overkill. Um, let's just make something else Consume. How about a Frozen Lance? This does make this card more valuable the one time that it's going to be used, and also remove it from the deck for the rest of the battle, which kind of serves as making my deck thinner as well. So it works for a lot of different functions. Um, yeah. So let's, uh... Let's make the Flash Freeze free as well, so I'm constantly playing spells. Alright, I could purge another card. But I think for now we're okay without it. Let's just move on. Save the money. Hoping to buy some really good upgrades. Alright, Fell. Fell is tricky. She's going to make a bunch of statues sit in the way, so I can't do damage to the back line very easily. But that's fine. Also, she's going to apply Scourge cards, which I have to play in order to prevent my Pyre from taking damage. That's going to happen. Pretty much unavoidable. I could play down the Titan Sentry and the Tethys Titan's Bane down here instead of my usual lineup, and I think that's fine. 
So let's do that. Apply Tethys. I'm going to play the Preserved Thorns, which gets me a bunch of stings. And let's go ahead and get rid of this. And then, um, yeah, let's sting, sting, so everyone dies, and then I'll sting you as well. Alright? Not too bad. And as they attack, we just keep applying more Frostbite. There's the Guard of the Unnamed. I will apply you somewhere else. This is not my Encant floor, so an Animus of Will would be fine here. Still a pretty weak Animus of Will, but oh well. Uh, let's see. I don't need to do any restores or anything quite yet, so I don't want to consume this. Let's go ahead and do the Preserved Thorns for a load more Stings. Actually, I want to apply them here. Let's get some more encant triggers. We apply one up over here. Um, and I don't see any reason to waste my consume cards right now. I'll just go ahead and do the restoration detonation for the heck of it. Ah, if only I had some more energy. Oh, well. Should be fine. Uh, we'll go ahead and apply the glacial seal up over here. I wanted to get rid of this, but we're just going to take some pyre damage. No good way around it. Let's do an offering token. Actually, we can get rid of this, which is even better. Uh, let's do another offering token. Get rid of the dead weight. Let's see. If I do a sting here, we could kill you. Alternatively, if I do the flash freeze, I think you die soon anyway. We'll go ahead and do a frozen lance. I'll do a sting on the boss for some extra damage and use the spell weakness. Then let's apply a restore. Actually, I should have done helical crystals to take advantage of that uh, spell weakness. It would have been a lot more. Oh well. For now, we're still doing fine. No worries about the top floor. It's annoying, but it's not a big deal. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get rid of the ultimate penance. Let's go ahead and do ice and pyre to get rid of that statue, and then do the helical crystals to hurt the boss. And apply a... Restore on you. And a sting. Let's see. I can do 20 damage. I can kill you, basically. That'll be fine. The frostbite will kill them next time they go up. Finally, I can get my other Encant unit. Okay, so now we'll Sting. Sting. Uh, I don't know if I want to do Ice Storm. I guess I could. It would do a lot of damage to the boss. Sure. Let's go ahead and make sure these guys all die. Offering token. We can apply Sap, but what's the point? To a unit that's already going to die? That doesn't matter too much. That's normally how I would do it, though. Okay, looking good. Uh, let's see. Uh, sting, make sure you die. Let's sting down here to try and make sure you guys die. Flash freeze. And a restore to get you back up to almost full health. Then we are going to restore. Frozen Lance. Offering. Train Steward. Sting. Okay, applying plenty of Frostbite on the boss. It's already up to 44 stacks. That's a lot of damage. And who cares about the top floor? The top floor is irrelevant. And all these stings are just ludicrous. Okay. Uh, let's see. Another sting for another encant trigger. I think we're okay at the moment. Let's just do some raw damage. Offering token, get rid of this. Offering token, get rid of this. I'll place down a train steward for the heck of it. Sure, why not? Another sting and a regen. That should be fine. This deck's doing pretty well so far. I like having an encant floor whenever I play as a Stygian. It's very, very strong. Uh, let's go ahead and do our holdover and apply the sap now. And the fact that my boss has multi-strike means that this sap is really going to hurt its damage output. So that hits pretty hard. Uh, we will do the helical crystals. Plus, let's see, I think obviously a sting and a sting. I will apply wildwood sap. So this unit lasts a lot longer, and that's enough to kill the boss. Let's get rid of some of the pyre damage. There we go. All right. And that finishes off this boss pretty easily. No problem whatsoever. No problem at all. Okay, we can get a rare card. Channel Song. Pretty good. You consume it, but it draws the card enhanced with a lot of extra uh, damage and health. Also makes it free. Um, I think I like this. We have enough units that I might be able to take advantage. It hurts if the Channel Song is the last thing you draw, but if it's one of the first things, it's very, very good. Um, another Light of Seraph is not necessary. I'm using my capacity pretty well, so I think I'm going to get the extra energy just so I can play more cards. I think that should end up being fine. It's pretty hard to get more units as you progress. The first few rounds get you units, and then after that you stop getting them. 
Now let's see, I can upgrade my units again, and I kind of want to do that. Alternatively, I could buy a trinket. But I think I'm going to go for the unit upgrades and also the pyre health. Buying trinkets is nice, but I don't I think we're alright. When you play a third card, draw more. It's okay. Chance to apply silence. So our enemies have a chance of uh, not having special abilities. Like in Cant. It's okay, but I don't think it's going to change anything. Let's just go for the card draw so I have lots of options with the extra energy. Let's upgrade my champion once again. We can apply even more Frostbite, and I think that's worth it. 20 Frostbite every unit on the floor. This is pretty strong. A large stone. Hmm, this is where I start to wish that I had um, some capacity. So this makes a unit a lot stronger, like the Animus of Will, for example, but takes up a lot of capacity. I think this is actually okay with me, because I'm not putting anything on the third floor right now. It's tanky enough it can live, and with being quick plus multi-strike, can probably clear out most things on the top floor before it takes any damage. So let's do that to my Animus of Will. Now this changes my lineup a little bit, but I think that's okay. Let's make my Titan Sentry strong so we get as much Frostbite out as possible. Spikes aren't important, so let's re-roll. Another round of Quick, I'll apply that to the Siren of the Sea. And let's see, I could give her more strength, or I could give her armor so she survives. <laughs> kind of works well with the encant. The armor doesn't give me more DPS, but on the final boss fights, if I have a super strong tank with lots of armor and DPS with lots of armor, she's not bad. So she'll survive for a while. This makes my bottom floor really strong. Let's do that. And I can make my Glacial Seal do damage. I guess why not? I mean, what else am I going to put on this thing? Nothing. We might as well. All right, moving on. So that's everything I want to do. Moving on to the next bot battle. Should be simple. Okay, all enemy units start with lots of extra damage, but 400 coins. It's risky, but I'm willing to take that risk. Let's do it. As long as we can put out loads and loads and loads of armor, we'll be fine. Okay, the units you can see, by the way, have lots of health now, so that's scary. So the same thing we did before. Uh, we're... Oh, it's a sweep unit. Frick! I didn't think about that. Sweep unit means that it can kill my hero. There's no way for me to save that. I shouldn't have done that. Well, hang on. Thorns? Strike, strike, strike. If I place down the Animus of Will here right now, it can kill you using quick. So we actually just saved the hero. Okay. Dumb. Not what I intended, but it will work. Let's go ahead and get rid of the Restore. I don't need it. And let's also place down another Sting just so we have even more card draw. Okay. Um, should have been punished there. Somehow survived. Let's play Channel Song. We got a super buff Glacial Seal who's free. Okay. I'm good with that. Encant. Encant. Don't have our tank yet, but that's fine. Um, I'm going to place down the Super Regen on you so you survive a lot longer. Ice Storm's probably not necessary. Let's do 26 more damage to try and make you die. Let's also do the Flash Freeze. Now you are going to die. Let's do the Holdover. Oh, okay. Now we have our unit. Unfortunate. It's going to have to get cycled through again. But we draw so many cards, maybe it's okay. Let's see. We can get rid of you, I guess. That's fine. Okay. We're just trying to build some encants, but all right. Probably shouldn't have drawn when I did. Hopefully we can keep killing these floors so fast it doesn't matter. Uh, I still need to preserve my hero, so these sweep units can become a huge problem. Mm, I could do 40 damage, but that's not enough, obviously. I can sting like crazy, and then helical crystal. It probably isn't enough, though. Get staying close, though. If I do automatic rail spikes, does that put you in range to die from multi-strike? I think it does. Well, I still want to play this. Oh, there we go. Sap. That helps a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean it doesn't actually help at all. Okay. Still not enough to save the hero, unfortunately. So the hero and all that frostbite is going to go away because they had sweep. That sucks. But, oh well. Uh, let's sting you guys to death. I could do a Restoration Detonation, but it's not going to be worth a lot. Okay, so these units are going to die. Then we are going to do Offering. Let's get rid of the Pyrebound. Doesn't matter. Let's do another Offering. Let's get rid of the Restoration Detonation. Doesn't matter. Let's do the Helical Crystal so we don't take as much damage. We are healing. Let's uh, let's just go ahead and apply some more um, Encants on our, uh, our unit over here. And we'll also just throw out a Frozen Lance at nothing for a little bit of extra armor and Encants. All right. Buffing up that second floor. Here we go, now we have a tank. Alright, so that at least is good. Uh, we will... Probably sting you guys. So you die. Moving on to the next floor, you'll do 120 health. 
We need to kill you somehow. Um, I can apply the sap. That'll help a little bit. You're taking a little damage, but it's not a big deal. These stings are just kind of ridiculous right now. All right, now we're doing 44 damage. It's not a lot. I don't need to do another consume on my restoration. Let's do the rail spikes again, just to do some damage. Okay. At this point, I think offering sap will be fine. So you're dead. This is the brief respite, so now's the time to just try and encant as much as we can, because the boss is probably coming next time. So we'll just go ahead and use pretty much everything I can here, whether they're useful or not is kind of irrelevant. Just ramping up in power. All right, and a flash freeze, we can't apply it on anything. Doesn't matter. All right, here comes the boss. That's a lot of health, admittedly. Still, we can sting you a lot and heal crystal you a lot. I don't think a restore makes a big difference in this case. So we'll just go for some more encant up here. Let's get rid of the Pyrebound, let's get rid of the dead weight and more stings, because why not? And then also, sure. All right, revenge, every time they take damage, they are doing something. I think they're gaining armor. It's one of the reasons they're so hard for me to kill, but they got through the first floor. They can still get through the second. That surprises and scares me. They gain damage whenever they get revenge. My, my, my apologies. Um, okay, so we're gonna go for sting, sting, sting. Let's get rid of the sap so we can reduce how much damage you do. We're doing pretty well here. Some frostbite would be going go well. An ice storm will probably finish you off. There we go. And you're dead. And it is ridiculous how many spells I can play in a turn. All right. Got through that, boss. That's going to be 400 more gold coming my way. Love it. Magic power on a floor. Works well with all the stings and the uh, healing. Hmm. Trying to think, can I actually apply it to anything that matters though? So the floors that I've got, one, two, three, four, five. If I stop playing the glacial seal, let's see. No, I've only got six capacity. We could put Mollusk Mage on the floor with my Encant, right? And that would be very, very strong. Sap is also quite good. But let's try Mollusk Mage. I think it works in this deck. I think it kind of works. Apply Rooted and draw extra cards is all right. Restore a ton of health could be helpful. I think I like this might be a little bit better. For focus growth, just so I have some extra healing potential in case something is starting to go wrong for me. All right, let's see. Um, this is going to be the final round before Seraph. So, what do I want to do? Do I want to upgrade units or do I want to upgrade spells? My units are already more or less done. So I think we want to go for upgrades on spells. We can also duplicate units, too, if we have something that's really, really good. Let's get the Pyre Health. Let's just see real quick what our first round of options are at the Merchants. Magic Power. Units gain extra upgrade slots. Well... Would have been nice. Apply days. I don't think we need that. I do think the magic power could be good. Let's also check here. So we can upgrade some more spells for something really good. Another upgraded frozen lance. Consume one of our stings so we don't have quite as many ridiculous ones. Eh. Upgrade or restore. The thing is, the restores aren't necessarily about healing, they're also about triggering spells. <laughs> so to an extent, it's actually better for me to just make these guys free and just play as many as we can. I don't want them to go away and be consumed. Permafrost. Channel Song? We'll always play that when we have the opportunity. A Restoration Detonation. I don't think I really need Permafrost on anything. Maybe on the Ice Storm. It's a lot of gold to spend. I'm not sure if it's worth it. 85? <laughs> I do think it's probably okay to put this on the automated uh, rail spikes. Or maybe on this. This way we guarantee we do damage even if we have no energy. So I can use it in a pinch. I'm gonna re-roll. I don't think I need the permafrost. Hold over on another thing. 
It lets me fish like crazy with offering. Yeah, we're going to have double offering tokens. We are constantly fishing for the cards that we want. Another upgrade, maybe on our Frozen Lance this time. We'll be okay. We have enough stings to trigger things. I think we're fine. Reduce uh, energy cost on, let's say, the focus growth. So I have lots and lots of health. Okay, seems fine. Then we're going to spend our money going to the trinkets. Let's get the magic power. And a reroll, I might be able to afford something or I might not. I'm gonna try for it. Okay, armor on our pyre or friendly units gain health. Let's just get the extra health. That is guaranteed to be good. And we can duplicate a card. Another channel song. Would be pretty solid. Additional sap, however, is really good. Especially when I guarantee to have lots and lots of draw and discard. I'm gonna go for the extra sap. Weirdly enough, I think it works. Apply two sap, for example, on the enemy boss, and he does not do much. He really doesn't. Okay, final fight. Here we go. Let's see if this actually works. Alright, he's got 2300 health. That's a lot. We can place down a tank. You guys don't have sweep, do you? You don't. So I'm okay with placing you here. And then maybe our Animus of Will. Do we want to place the Animus of Will on a separate floor? It was working pretty well where it was before, to be honest. I do kind of want to put it on a separate floor, actually. And we'll go ahead and place you here. Alright, so we're looking pretty solid. I could do some damage to you. Um, 20, 33 damage. It's kind of meh. They will hold off on that. Alright, so we got somebody on every floor. The reason is I still want to put the Glacial Seal on this floor with the Encant if possible. Uh, let's go ahead and place you here. An Ice Storm, not necessary, really. We could play it down here, though. It wouldn't be bad. Alternatively, we can sap the crud out of you guys. Wouldn't take as much damage. It's pretty tempting. You're dead. Not worried about you. We can just sap you for now. Sure, let's just take a heck of a lot less damage. Just saving some health. Gotta play the long game here. Alright, a Mollusk Mage here. Let's me get a lot more power for things like stings. Bye! Uh, we do want to use the holdover, so let's do that on... Oh, I shouldn't have done that here. Ah, alright. Meant to do that on a different floor. Oh, well, we're just getting the incants. Thorns! Assemble! How are we looking over here? Pretty good! So let's sting, and sting, and sting, and sting! You're dead. Good. I'm gonna go ahead and heal you up. And we are going to offering token. And I want to place down the sting. Get rid of that. We'll place down the glacial seal, and let's just encant and get stronger for now. We don't need to do more damage, we're already killing everything. I just want stronger floors. Okay, um, Channel Song. I don't think there's anything we can get here. No, there was. There was a stronger train steward. You know what? There are worse things in this world. Let's place you down right there. Okay, doing a pretty good amount of damage now. Uh, let's see. We want... You're already dying. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the Pyre Bound. We don't need that right now. We don't have Sap. I do want to sting and maybe try to kill you. Okay. Uh, I'll do the helical crystals to try and hit the boss. And we'll apply a, a bit of frostbite. And maybe a restoration detonation to get a little bit healthier. And another sting. And also some more draw and health for later. Also, we will draw and get rid of a Restore, then more Frostbite, then more Restore, even though we don't need it. Okay. Second floor is looking super scary. The first floor basically exists just to soften everything up and get rid of the trash. Although, here we do actually get to do the Double Sappage. Well, that's going to be hilarious. They get to do practically no damage now. Love it. Um, let's see. I'm going to put the Regen on you, so we get you a little bit tidied up. Sting... You're already dying. Sting. I could double sting you, or I could just encant more. I think we're okay just encanting more. I'm gonna apply it on nothing. There we go. Controversial choice when you can kill things, I know, but I think it's fine. Let's get rid of the Pyrebound, getting more of the Frostbite going. We have so many stings, it's just sickening. It makes me sick. Um... Ice Storm down here isn't bad. We can at least kill everything. 
do a lot more damage to the boss. Let's just do it. Wasn't enough. Surprised you're not all dying yet. Um, we're gonna apply a lot more Frostbite, which is nice. We don't need the Restoration Detonation, so let's get rid of that. We'll do the Heal of the Crystals. Sting, we'll sting. And unless we kill you, none of these guys are going to be able to hit the boss anyway. So we might as well just use Stings to get more in cans. Also Frostbite. Of course, I think that the boss is able to res uh, remove a lot of Frostbite. Yeah, they do remove Frostbite. So it's not like we're getting a lot of damage out on that. But still, counts for something, right? Uh, let's see. We are going to get rid of all their damage by using Sap. Double Sapage. It turns out it's pretty good. We're surviving really well. Oh, look, another Sapage. That's kind of fun. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get some extra health on you. And a restoration detonation so you die. Um, sting. Sting. Restore. Let's just go ahead and get rid of this unit so we can do more damage to the boss. I'm going to sting here to weaken you up. And I guess I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the automatic rail spike. It's just taking up my deck and I don't need it. Final wave should be coming up any second now. There it is. All right, boss is not dying yet, but that's fine. The next floor is one of our big heavy hitters. That said, we can still have a little bit of fun using the offering tokens to get rid of things that don't matter. And just, uh, actually, we should do it here. Never mind, hang on. Let's do that. Um, let's see. Focus growth. That's fine. Let's get rid of the restore. Oh, I didn't need this, turns out. Thought maybe this unit was still a little bit more damaged than he was. Oh, good, sap. Okay, yeah, that's that's hilarious. Um, let's do some damage. And let's frostbite you. And uh, we can sting. If we can kill you and get you in range, we can try to do more damage to the boss. Okay, now we're doing 799. Now we're doing 789. It went down. Okay, we're almost killing the boss. Almost able to kill the boss in the first floor. This, this is proven to be a pretty solid run, I think. And the Saps, to just reduce all of his multi-strike damage, is going to be outstanding for us. He's already dead, but I mean, at this point, I'm just having some fun with it. Uh, let's see, we're going to apply some extra health, then we're going to frostbite you, and uh, we're going to restore, and we're going to restore, and we're going to restoration detonation, and also um, we can sting, and sting, and sting, and sting. There we go. All right, easy mode. Not bad. I mean, it's only Covenant Rank three, right? uh, 2, so, I mean, of course it's easy, but still, I feel like that was a pretty solid deck. Stings with that trinket are amazing. All the uh, intentional use of the discarded offerings was pretty solid, and then, yeah, just lots and lots of Frostbite and careful Encant usage worked great. Beautiful run. Absolutely beautiful run. So we got a score of 42,395. I got to Covenant Rank 3. Uh, we got Golden Cards, which is always pretty cool. And I'm going to be leveling up some of my races so we can get more cards and trinkets unlocked in the future. Some of which are actually pretty decent. And that ends my run of Monster Train. So yeah, that was about an hour. But I mean, it's really, really fun to do. Unlocking lots of different cards and stuff. There's a pretty awesome vanity to it. Continue to work up that Covenant rank. I'm telling you, it does get really, really hard. Don't think that it's always this easy. But yeah, everyone is different. I have a lot of fun with this game. I think it is absolutely worth checking out, and there will be a link in the description down below for those who might be interested. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this extra long video. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.